Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial from Comsol on stresses and strains in a wrench. I'm using Comsol version 6.0 and it is the only physics module I have. So no additional modules will be needed for this tutorial. Um, also, I'll be using the geometry file, the bin file from Comsol's website. So I've already downloaded that, and if you want to do this tutorial, you can get that uh, from the link in my description. So new model wizard, this is going to be a 3D model, and we'll be modeling um, basically the torque, uh, the stress and trains, strains in a wrench, so the pressure applied to the opposite end of the wrench where it's got a... Uh, a bolt. Uh, the bolt's fixed constraint is at the cross section shown below. A load is applied at the box end of the combo wrench. So to start with, we're making a 3D model and selecting structural mechanics, solid mechanics, physics. Add, study, and then we're going to do a stationary study. So you could choose from eigenfrequency, time dependent, or stationary. Right, and next we'll import the geometry. So we'll go to the home tab here, home toolbar, click import. Um, so you can just right click on geometry and then hit import. And then I'm gonna look for my file and downloads wrench.mphbin and import. Voila, there it is. And you can just click on the graphics view to turn it around and see any angle. So it's got a uh, sort of angle at the end where the load is applied, where our hand is pushing on it. And then this end is applied to a bolt. So I'll hit the zoom extends to go back to default view or the uh, go to default view button. All right, so after importing the geometry, we'll add a material. In the home toolbar, click add material. Oh, you know what? I think some of my icons aren't showing up because just because I have this in a partial screen view, if I had it in the full screen, all the icons would appear. Okay, go to add material. And we're going to select the structural steel material from the built-in. So you can just type it in there and it'll come up. You could also just type in steel and that would also bring it up. So I'm going to add to component. Okay, and parameters. In the model builder window under global definitions, click parameters 1. global definitions and not component one definitions. So that's one thing to be careful for is um, how you define your variables. If it's global, then all components can access it. If it's a definition or a perimeter defined only for component one, then it's not a global variable. So that's just the scope of your variable. So we're defining global definitions right now. Parameter F applied force is 150 newtons, capital N, applied force. All right, and now to model the fixed constraint uh, in the solid mechanics physics. So in the model will builder window under component one, right click solid mechanics and choose fixed constraint. So there you can see it appeared here under the solid mechanics listing of component one. So now we're changing the physics for this component. Click the wireframe rendering button in the graphics toolbar. Okay, so that's this, I oh know that's transparency. The one right next to transparency is wireframe rendering. And that just changes your model so you can see through it and see all the 
boundaries. Select boundary 35 only. So which boundary is that? Um, hover over each one until you find 35 or um, another way to do it would be to select all so you can instead of saying manual you can choose all boundaries from the drop down menu and then find where 35 is so click on 35 and you can see where it is highlighted and you could either delete all the other ones by highlighting those and subtracting, um, which I'll do just for demonstration, even though it probably would have been easier to just deselect all and then click on that one. Okay, so now we're defining the boundary load. In the physics toolbar, click boundaries. So we're gonna click physics at the top. Boundaries, choose boundary load. Select boundary 111 only. All right, so same thing. Um, We'll just do all boundaries, find where 111 is. Now I'll do it the other way to show both ways. So 11 is where our applied force is right here. So I'm going to deselect them, go to, um, to deselect all of them. You can just do the clear selection button, or you can just do select all minus, and then choose that one. All right. So 111 is selected for total force, um, or boundary load one. In the settings window for boundary load, locate the force section. So down here, and from the load type, choose total force. All right, and specify the F total vector as zero for the X, component of the vector is zero for the y component and negative f for the z component. So vector has magnitude and direction so we're saying the total force is completely downward. It's in the negative z direction with a magnitude of f which we defined in the global definitions. If there was like any twist or forward and aft motion to the pressure applied, then you'd have an X and Y component. All right, and it's negative just as we've de defined datum here. So convention would tell us up is positive and down is negative. And then we're gonna define the mesh next. Use finer mesh because the geometry contains small edges and faces. All right, so in the model builder window under component one, click mesh one, and in the settings, locate physics. Oh, I picked the wrong thing. There's mesh one, physics controlled mesh, and we're gonna change it from normal to finer and build. All right. Now we're ready for the study. If your computer has more than four gigabytes of RAM, you can skip the following four instructions and continue directly to compute the solution. Otherwise, follow these steps using an iterative solver. So I do have a pretty powerful eight core computer, so I'm gonna skip these steps. Um, and let's see, if you didn't have that much computing power or memory for the data intensive computation just to save your computer so it doesn't crash halfway through the simulation. You could follow these steps to do an iterative solver. Um, so you'd add a stationary solver one, suggested iterative solver, and enable it before computing. Okay, stress for the solid. The default plot group show oh i have to hit compute so we'll go to study stationary and compute so while it stalls let's look at what we'll be doing after that
The default plot group shows the von Mises. I don't know how to say that. Mises von von Mises stress in a surface plot with a displacement visualized using a deformation subnode. Change to a more suitable unit as follows. So we'll go to the results, volume one. Settings, locate expression from unit, choose megapascal. Okay, that wasn't too long. That was only 31 seconds. And it's done, and it's showing the surface plot for, oh, sorry, the volume plot for von Mises stress. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Okay, so we're going to go to results, stress, volume one. So I'm clicking on volume one in the model builder window and then changing the units in the expression section. So we're changing units from newtons per meter squared to mega pascal. So pascals times 10 to the third. And in the stress solid toolbar, click plot. Okay, it doesn't actually look like it. Oh, my legend changed because the units changed, but the color gradient pretty much stayed the same. Okay, uh, first principle string. In model builder window, right click stress and choose duplicate. So I'm right clicking on stress. Where's duplicate, or you can do hotkey combo control shift D. Okay, so you'll see another stress study appear here. And this time we're going to uh, label it first principle strain. Okay, so in the label, I'm gonna write over that first principle string. Okay, volume one. So I'm gonna click in the volume one under that first principle string I just labeled. And in the settings for volume, replace, click replace expression. So down here for expression, there's the replace expression button. And this pops open. And from the menu, choose component one. So from the drop down menu, see here, component one, solid mechanics. I'll expand that menu. And a strain, principal strain. Strain, principal strain. Solid EP1, first principal strain. Okay, so I'll just double click that and we go back to the main menu. In the first principal strain toolbar, click plot. Okay, so I have pressed, or it's done computing or plotting. And now you can see a displacement here after the application of force on this end of the wrench. Notice that the maximum principal strain is lower than 2%, a result that satisfies the small strain assumption. Where maximum principal strain. Okay, so if this is our legend here, the maximum with the deep red up here would be 20 times 10 to the negative 4, so that would be 0 0.02. That's the 2%. And everything on here is actually lower than 2% because it looks like the, the deepest red here is below the maximum of this legend. So that's the thing about um, software and any type of modeling is you have to keep in mind the governing equations and assumptions that 
make it acceptable to use those governing equations or boundary conditions or other conditions you've used to model a scenario. So I'm not familiar with the um, small strain assumption used for first principle strain. Um, so I'd have to research it, but they are pointing that out here for this tutorial. And that's it. That was a pretty straightforward tutorial made much faster by the fact that the geometry was already completed. This would have taken most of the time to, to do this um, from scratch. And for something like this, uh, most people would have a CAD drawing. And to upload a CAD drawing or CAD file that you already have, you need the CAD uh, the AutoCAD Live Link, which is an additional module you have to purchase. Um, so I don't have that one, and uh, I just have to create geometry from scratch if I have an actual uh, project, like client work I'm doing. But it's just something to keep in mind. So that's it. And if you enjoyed and you want to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. And feel free to let me know if you have any questions or suggestions for new videos. Thanks. See you next time.